much. I will just uh, start uh, to tell a little the context of this um, uh, lecture because it's um, it's uh, the result also of a, a sort of research we done with Chris Younes um, uh, about the result of the competition of Europan, as you explain. And uh, in two words, I explain what is Europan in the not in the next but the 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 slide after. You can change, please. The, the slide, somebody is uh, moving the slide. I know, okay, uh, perfect, sorry. So uh, where uh, you can see a, a slide with a European map, it's possible? It's a third slide, okay? So Europan is a thematic competition of ID project, but the originality, it's followed by a process of implementation. So it's a, at the same time a tool for um, European cities uh, and also urban actors to uh, find and develop innovative strategy for their site in transformation. And uh, Europa is also a platform for young professional, European professional of design in uh, architectural, uh, uh, urban and landscape uh, design. More now uh, it's also open to students uh, in master uh, associate to an architect. So it's represent quite a lot because each session we have near uh, 1000 uh, answer to analyze, to, to, to make um, uh, analyze by juries and so on. And at the end, we have a, a sort of a group of 80 projects that are very, and of course, it's a thematic competition. So the last session about which we will call it, the, the, the topic was uh, um, living cities. So it's really related to the transformation of areas that are marked by the, uh, we can say the Anthropocene period and uh, that uh, has to be transformed to adapt and to find a sort of a, a hybridity between uh, natural and uh, between nature and artifice and built area. So I let now Chris okay. with a theoretical introduction, then I will come back to present some projects. Okay, so uh, I, I will say in many today in times marked by devastation, climatic emergency, the questioning of regenerative boundaries is at the heart of new ecologies. It's go beyond anthropocentrism and opposition between nature and culture, as in a modernism point of view. Complexity, holistic, and dynamic reconfiguration are at stake in order to reanimate a biotic and ethical community. Our research about the winning projects in Europan 16 explored the new attitudes from designers in order to establish the borders and the crossing that could be used to empower condition of habitability of the world. Many projects tend to activate regeneration of milieus. A paradigm shift is underway, leading to the question of how to reconciliate human and art artifact and nature. It's about symbiosis and synergies. Symbiosis has vital relationships between distinct beings. Synergies as actions taken in concert between different elements, organ or stakeholders. So it's about metabolism, but also about equity, solidarity, to repair, to maintain and to continue to care in a way as explained by the ecofeminist Johan Tronto. 
we, in our research, we could observe and we six challenges, very and particularly significant. The first one is about coexistence of human and non-human. So we, we, we need to see the slide about coexistence <laughs> of humans and non-humans. Mm. It appears that vitality and vulnerability of humankind, as both of them, vitality and vulnerability, is linked to the vitality and to the vulnerability of biodiversity. It's not possible to separate them in a way. In his magnificent novel called The Overstory, the writer Richard Powers describes the powerful ecosystem of life and also how the condition of life are connected together or interlinked. And it's a quotation, creating the soil, cycling the water, trading into the nutrients, making weather, building atmosphere, feeding and curing and sheltering more kinds of creatures than people now to count, explains uh, Richard Powers. It's a genuine shift placing the relationships, connection, and other links between human and non-human at a turning point. So maybe we okay. can... I, I will present uh, two projects of Europan related to this uh, important topic, topic, how to reconnect human and non-human in uh, in uh, urban uh, development in inhabited milieu, as we said, and the first um, uh, project I propose you is a Norwegian one in a city called Fagerstrand, and this city is interesting because uh, it's an industrial city but obsolete, where uh, you can see on the on the slide uh, it's by the sea, so the natural elements are really strong. But at the same time, you, uh, you can see in the, in the second uh, image on the same slide that it's a mix between industrial obsolete uh, um, area, already in a certain hybridization with a near wide natural uh, site. And of course, uh, the goal, the city of Fagerstrand gave us this site because they want to reconnect uh, the inhabitants and the way they can profit lives with nature uh, and of course uh, taking in advantage that it exists already a sort of ecological corridor uh, that it's necessary to enrich in biodiversity. So I think that the answer, if we can connect some attitude of project with the topic that Chris developed, it's how to maintain natural reconnection and, of course, to reinforce biodiversity in uh, uh, urban develop in urban area. And the next slide, please. And the project we propose, uh, we selected on this side. Next slide, yes, uh, is a, is a, a, a project called Living City, Living Sea. And you can see on the right that they use this green corridor uh, to create a sort of model of park city uh, structured around this corridor and inside some polarities, uh, inhabited polarities, but let uh, inside the city a lot of uh, uh, green area. Uh, they, they research a LC balance between uh, the porous the porosity between the, the built and the non-built area. And of course, they want to preserve and develop the fauna and flora that is already uh, strong. And you can see on the picture on the left that is really uh, eloquent of this coexistence because you have a sort of intensification of the building area, but among the trees, but you can see on the, on the slide 
the sea with uh, inhabited sea, sea with the fishes, different elements. And so it's it's a question of the coexistence of these two worlds, protecting, of course, uh, the biodiversity and the fauna and flora. So the, the next slide, please, is in Niort in France. It's the second project on this topic we propose, um, where uh, the challenge was to strengthen the synergy between the urban system um, at a large scale and the local March agro ecosystem. It's, uh, the, the, it's in France, Niort, and the project, next slide, is called Port Terrestre. And they start, and inside the, the team of Europan, you have also landscaper that have another way to uh, read the territory. So they start from a geographical and landscape analysis of the territory, very interesting, including the march, to propose a strategy that is quite new, uh, not an urbanization plan, but what they call an intercommunal natural plan. It means that they, they look at the way uh, because the, the, the site, it's a very wet site, and uh, it's planned that the rising water will perhaps be of one meter in, uh, uh, before end of, the, of this century. So they take into account this uh, rising water to elaborate, you can see the, the small piece in red. It's the inhabited area around this new uh, water land becoming more and more a sea land. And uh, it's interesting to see this. Uh, some part will be uh, like uh, island in, uh, in the sea. And they, uh, of course, change of scale and look at uh, proximity scale where they develop a lot of uh, uh, coexistence between this uh, new water uh, dynamic uh, that is ad accepted, not refused, not, uh, they don't defend against this, but of course they try to manage the coexistence by creating a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, also urban development that can be related to leisure, to city uh, uh, economy and so on. So it was the first topic. So Chris, yes, the second idea. And so we can we see how it's uh, interesting the the way it's possible to imagine. Uh, regenerative boundaries uh, between animals, plants, sea, soil, uh, and human activities. And the, the second idea we could see in the, because we had a lot of projects and we worked about the winning the winners. And, and the second idea we could see is about living in the forest. We called it living in the forest. We could have uh, named it um, living with trees because it's the uh, importance of trees, of plants in the life of people. We, we would need the second slide about the second idea. Yeah. Living with oh. the forest. You want to continue? And so this question to create uh, ecological continuities beyond the landscape ruptures is very, very important. And uh, in um, Le, we, we have a very important uh, decisive book, uh, a Sand County Almanac, who was written in the middle of the 20th century by Aldo Leopold, which uh, is a pioneer because he was advocating an earth ethic. The question is to think about the Earth, about the planet Terre, the, the, the planet Earth, as a living organism. And so what he was very interesting in this book is that he was highlighted, he was highlighting the consequences of human action on the balance of what he calls the biotic community. And so this question of biotic community is a, is a very important one because architecture has, in a way, to work with politics question, 
and biological and sociological, economical, uh, environmental question. And so he went, what was very interesting with Aldo Leopold, and I, it's a very important uh, book because on his Wisconsin farm, near the woods, months after months, he observed and he took notes about animal behavior, plant development, and the correlations arising from good or bad management of the fauna and the flora. And so this question, living with the forest, living with the woods, living with the plants, is very important for, and to imagine new scenarios about this and new uh, boundaries between human and animal with wild and non-wild. We could okay. see some projects. Yeah, I, I will present you two projects that are in relation with this uh, topic developed by Chris. Uh, one is in Namur um, in Belgium and uh, the site you can see um, uh, raise the question how to create a sort of uh, ecological continuity at the large scale of the territory uh, beyond the landscape ruptures because it's a green area, but a green area that are uh, inside the conur urban conurbation is very often today. And the project, uh, next slide, is uh, uh, called Le Sol, Le Roseau, et Le Cycliste. Uh, it starts uh, also uh, here with a, a sort of um, uh, analysis of the large scale uh, landscape. Uh, and an analysis of the natural element of this landscape. Uh, there is also a sort of west wasteland. It's a former military base where it's interesting. Uh, the nature, it's a uh, spontaneous naturalization of a military fringe. And uh, the idea was to keep the municipality, uh, say uh, we can keep this and uh, but not only alone isolated, but how to connect this uh, sort of a spontaneous uh, a green area with the other um, uh, forest or uh, elements and of the landscape. And it's interesting because the, 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 this project is proposed to, to create a sort of a shelter for the fauna and flora uh, using the rich heritage to strengthen it, uh, to use, to connect uh, the fragmented part of the territory through a sort of park. And uh, the park is a dom dominant of trees, but it's, they are existing for a large part. Uh, but inside this uh, landscape, they propose some acupuncture work to insert a leisure program uh, and it's interesting because in the two projects I, I will show you on this uh, topic of uh, uh, inhabited forests is another way to inhabit when the nature is dominant, is uh, respectful for the for the natural dynamic, and uh, it's a case in this project where the uh, built uh, or refurbished built elements are uh, connected with some paths that. Uh, are reserved for, for pedestrians that walk inside this forest, trying to protect, and also it's a boundary. Sometimes a boundary is necessary to protect the natural uh, context. So the second project, next slide, please, is um, about uh, another site. It's La Porte du Hainaut. It's, uh, uh, you can see the picture. It's a mining a former site. Uh, but uh, still, uh, the project that is called Eco Hub Race uh, fights again against a, a sort of decline of biodiversity, and it propose to uh, first action to manage the area resources, the soil, the forest, the water, the industrial, also the industrial heritage, and uh, to do so to reconnect with nature. Uh, 
uh, as the first and most important action. So they create a sort of uh, European wildlife park with clearly uh, a firm uh, inaccessible area to uh, allow the recreation and, uh, uh, of nature. So it's quite interesting uh, that sometimes uh, the way people in a uh, human can connect to the nature have to be um, uh, clearly uh, defined in a subtle way. Chris, c'est à toi. We need another slide. Thank you. The, the, the first idea we could uh, find in the projects is about transmission and creation. Between, uh, be, between uh, the sustainable landscape architecture is a strategic challenge in which design practice must play an active role at all levels. Because the question of uh, architecture is more and more a landscape architecture. And uh, because it's uh, with this question of ecosystem and with this change of paradigm, landscape and architecture works together. And it means a big palimpsest of heritage and concern for the future. No more tabula rasa, but to interlink heritage and creation. It means to experiment new hybridization, hybridization between cultural forces and between the big diversities of cultures, the specificity of cultures, of situation, but also to cope with tectonic, atmospheric, and climatic biological forces. And that's the very important to interlink these two kinds of forces to adapt to life cycles and to social and natural rhythm. That's why we are, see two projects who imagine this kind of rebirth and uh, regenerative boundaries. Yeah, and the two projects I will show you are two projects that play with multiscalar connection because uh, to introduce uh, the cycles, the rhythm of the nature inside the built areas, it's very important to, to uh, introduce this uh, uh, a multiscalar uh, dimension of the design. Uh, the first project uh, is uh, called uh, next uh, uh, beat match uh, matching. It's in France in Pontaven. So Pontaven is a small city, but it's a famous city because you have a lot of tourists. It's very nice. Uh, uh, it's not by the sea directly, but it's by a river and not far from the sea. Because of painters. Uh, and because of painters. Of painters, of course, of, uh, of culture. Yes. And uh, uh, Pontaven uh, has nevertheless an industrial path. And you can see uh, in this uh, slide, I have a look if it's a good slide. Uh, yeah, you can see that uh, they have also industrial elements that uh, uh, are inside this, uh, this fantastic landscape, the, the benefits. And uh, of course, the municipality asks themselves how, how to, uh, uh, to, to to try to find to to, to against uh, to fight against uh, the dichotomy between this industrial area that were uh, with a lot of networks, uh, a lot of roads, and so on, and the, because they are built inside the, the forests, and and the, even if it's connected directly to the to the sea. So it's a former industrial area that was done in Pontaven. And uh, the challenge of this uh, beat matching project is uh, to introduce this uh, scale of the rhythm and the cycle of uh, element, not only of nature, but also of uses of people. And because it's interesting, because uh, 
At the same time, they want to uh, um, reintroduce territorial continuities with the river, that is a large scale uh, element that go to the, goes to the sea, and also a sort of uh, linear street called La Belle Angèle. Um, so they want to use these uh, structures, these uh, uh, element backbone, uh, as, as a, uh, an axis where they can develop a sort of partition of gardens, parks, promenade, fragment of landscape, uh, and where the passes, the pedestrian uh, lane are on phases, what is uh, uh, what allow to hybridize, uh, uh, preserve, build space, redesign this industrial heritage of all canneries with new build space, uh, cultural uh, space, but in a sort of hybridization with the nature, reintroducing the nature inside this uh, uh, partition of uh, a cultural element. So it's it, it, quite interesting. And the second project, next slide, is in another uh, context, is in Esparreguera in Spain. Uh, it's a more patrimony because it's called the Colonia. It's in the nature. It's a sort of a utopic social and built heritage between rurality and industry. But that is today with a poor uh, use, industrial production and a little housing. But the municipality want to relaunch the dynamic of this uh, interesting patrimony. And the project, next slide, I think, uh, the way of CEDO, uh, propose to connect the isolated entity to the city and its natural environment. So it's the same attitude as the uh, former project. First, to see the site at a large scale and to uh, reconnect uh, with element, natural elements the proximity with the large scale that is uh, interesting in the two cases. So it's worked at different scale from the valley to the neighborhood. And they use a lot of uh, uh, routes, that routes uh, that pedestrian paths or water uh, routes, canals, networks, and to reconnect uh, human with the rhythm and cycle of the natural environment. So now we, we, we see the, the ID4 uh, about restoring scales of proximity and of territorial continuity. That was very interesting, this research about all these projects, because we had a lot of projects to, 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 to see uh, and to discuss. Uh, it was the evolution uh, at the same time in landscape, ecosystem, architecture, and to rediscover the power of proximity. That was very, it's very, very strong. And we can see also this with the students in School of Architecture in France, that with maybe with the COVID pandemic, the potential of proximity has been recognized as very, very powerful because it's a possible to have, a, to, to empower an art of places. The question of places, the question of links, between the near and the far, and uh, between each day of the, of the year, uh, and also between different ages, different personalities, different cultures who are living somewhere. It's uh, the, the proximity allows a lot of possibilities. It implies to re-engage sensibility, senses, and well-being as close as possible as everydayness. The pleasure of walking the distance, of passing by trees, of caring for plants and animals, of rediscovering public spaces, balconies, rooftops, gardens, and so on. But it means also the power of proximity. It means also promoting short supply chain soil fertilizations, permaculture, geo bio sourced materials. In fact, it's a possibility to stimulate circular economy. And so we have projects 
Who speak yeah, about this? Still two projects on this uh, topic. That are, the two projects are creating a close common, as you spoke about, a common. And, uh, and it's a first action to be at the proximity, the opposite of the uh, former attitude in the former topic. And only after to connect uh, this uh, uh, restructuration of the common to the territory. And we have two projects. Uh, one is in, uh, in France, in Limoges. Uh, the name of the project is called the Les Petits Ventreville. And the goal of the uh, winners are to repair the broken connection between the city center and the river district, but uh, first to create a sort of network of public space. It's it's an really uh, an already built environment, but with some voids uh, that are still very uh, intense and they uh, subtract some uh, degraded building. And they try to create inside the, the, the patchwork of the building uh, a sort of uh, uh, a sort of uh, proximity uh, uh, square proximity public space that they connect together by green uh, element, and um, they allow a sort of network of public space to emerge, uh, forming so small centrality but connect to each other, to, to disenclave the, the area that is uh, really introverse, and in a certain way also to connect to a magnif magnif magnificent uh, uh, landscape around with the river and a lot of el natural elements. Uh, and they try to constitute that we can call a bio region at a big, larger scale, and just to make this uh, part of the city participating to this bio region uh, connection between really uh, uh, bio biologic or uh, uh, biodynamic element. And the second project is in Rissoy in Norway. Uh, and it's uh, um, the city, uh, you can see the slide is quite interesting. It's an island you can see at a large uh, scale that is um, they, they connected to the city on the other side of the canal, but the island itself is divided in two parts. One is the harbor of the city, so it's a sort of a boundary, closed area, except uh, the way the, the connection to the sea for the boats. And in, uh, in another side, a totally different scale. It's a long uh, area of small individual housing, and the two uh, are just juxtapose with our connection. And uh, so the, the city was looking for a public space strategy because the residential area is uh, poor as uh, uh, proximity scale uh, spaces and to connect to, as I say, the city center to the neighborhood island because there is also an, uh, another island. So there is a disenclavement of the residential area, but at the same time, to uh, find a better uh, connection uh, between the harbor and the uh, residential area. It's not easy at all. So the, the project, next slide, uh, called Ripple in the Water, proposed to reconsider the large separating canal uh, that separates the center of the city to the island is a recreational uh, central area uh, as, as the most important public space in, in the city. So they, they work on the banks of this uh, canal uh, and also they add some bridge um, and they, they try to compose a series, a set of, uh, they want to uh, create a sort of uh, grid of streets, uh, but uh, pedestrian street without cars uh, in order to, to form different neighborhoods. And uh, also the separation between the residential and the industrial area, the port, is um, in between they, they, try, they work on a, on a connection by a pedestrian loop that can ensure a sort of interface between the work space and the uh, residential and living space. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for this uh, 
presentation project and it's about the ID5 because uh, what is very uh, also it was very remarkable in the in the projects is uh, if we already we spoke about uh, the importance to interlink uh, in 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 a, in a way to go through boundaries about scales about human non human uh, it's also the question of uh, common grounds in a way. And uh, the, the question of uh, the search for a common ground uh, also plays a decisive role leading to cooperation, not only between the architects and the client, but also including users, association, and all, all kinds of stakeholders. We, we, we can notice it's a very big turn also. The question to associate the person who are going to use the new, uh, the new design uh, spaces. And so uh, the processes uh, includes collaborative methods and principle to collect data, to adjust to the specificities of situations to, uh, to take uh, in consideration conflicts and divergent point of view. That's uh, a big change also. It's not only to think about the design up, down, but to work with the, the, the in a horizontal way. And so a lot of, uh, of uh, projects, winners and not winners, wants to develop other methods about cooperation. And so it's to co-produce meaning. It's to, to, in a way to co-produce meaning because the question of, of the signification, the question of sense, the question of meaning is very, very important. And many projects explicitly aim to take advantage to this inclusive, pragmatic, and democratic approaches, which are seen as valuable resources for doing with the other. So this question to doing with the users is very important and, and to all kinds of users. And so we have two projects for yeah. these five points. Yeah, the, the two projects, uh, because in Europe, you have to understand that uh, you can see that very often it's large territory uh, and we have a, a sort of a territorial scale, we have a, a reflection scale, and we have often a, a, a project site. It means that, but we ask to the competitor to work in between the scale. And uh, it's not only a project design, it's also a processus, we say in Europe. It means that the competitor and uh, very often the winner propose, as Chris said, some strategy to involve the inhabitants in this uh, ecological uh, modification of the of the area. So the first project is uh, French uh, in Douaisis Aglo. It's still a, a territory marked by the coal extraction and uh, abandoned mine today. And the project is called the Bet of the Living because he, he want to reverse the extra activist memory of the exploitation of human and non-human resource, as he said, and he want to reinforce a sort of a resilience of the inhabitants with the already there, because a majority of people that were there when it was active are still there, uh, living there. So it's important and also the new generation that will uh, uh, develop the, the area in the future. So it's not a project, this uh, proposal, it's just a sort of a method, method that is based on a knowledge, what they call a vernacular knowledge of the territory uh, and on the commitment of the field team backed by experts. The project proposes a sort of participative game in which the action card for the living mobilize the various actors, skills, desire, and needs. So it's quite interesting. It's, of course, uh, not a project. It's just a, a, met a method, a process, a, propos a proposal of process 
to develop. And today is involved uh, on the area to try to, because the, the municipality are quite interesting today that uh, the project involves uh, inhabitants, but of course it has to be done with a very uh, careful way to do, uh, to be efficient and not to be only a political uh, way to manage. So it's quite interesting to see these uh, new generations that are very careful to take care of the people that live there, the memory of the site, and not only to transform them uh, as, uh, as in the past. So the second project, next slide, is in Vasteras in Sweden, where the city was uh, only one uh, will to revegetalize the industrial territory that is uh, uh, today uh, not in activity. But the project uh, Vitality, um, it goes further because they want to adopt a sort of metabolic approach with a multi-layer global uh, assessment of the resource over time and an identification of the area where the soil is have to be decontaminated, fertilized, planted, and so on, and where the fjord, because it's still a fjord water, is, uh, is purified. Uh, thanks to uh, algae, I'm just going to say this algae, um, to give life also a dynamic life to underwater species. So it's interesting also to see this uh, uh, architect or uh, young professional to be very, um, uh, to take care also uh, about the nature, not only uh, about the building. And uh, uh, they want to create sort of ecological project to articulate a sort of so social dimension with the inhabitants, democratic participation, and to create a process of natural and inclusive together co-evolution around several specific intense place of proximity life. So at the same time, they, they, they make a representation of what they want. And it's quite interesting because they create this micro space in, a, in, a, in an environment of big uh, industrial or housing blocks. They propose to integrate where the nature is present and dynamic, very more uh, smaller uh, area where it's possible to meet, to uh, create intense place of uh, proximity. Yes. And so now we, we it's uh, the last, uh, the last uh, ID. It's about second lives, uh, and uh, that's uh, in a way it's a very important uh, idea too because it's a very new and uh, more and more present in projects. Is about uh, the possibility to enrich projects by reuse things, by re and upcycling. Uh, materialities and so on. And so mixing materialities, temporalities, situation, uh, combining uh, uh, density, uh, and uh, it's, we should have a, another word about materiality. It was uh, something was forgotten in, uh, in, my, in my speech because it's something is very important about the quality of urban life. And it's not a matter of quantity but it's a question of quality. And uh, this materiality, it's about space, about flows, about frugality, as explained uh, very often, uh, Philippe uh, Madec and of the association, punctuated by borders and passages. That because that's important to facilitate the positives, the way employment of things, the fluidity of itineraries and the sharing, we always, we are a lot uh, speaking in many projects of winners and no, uh, also others about the, the intentionality of improving sharing. So we have two projects and yeah. we have the, a, a little bit conclusion. Yeah, it's the two last one uh, shortly. The first one is uh, in Spain in uh, Almendralero. Um, it's a it's a city <clears throat> like uh, 
very often in some uh, small or average scale uh, uh, Spanish city in the south, it's uh, very um, uh, developed with a sort of uh, large scale uh, agriculture. And uh, in Almendralero, it's a case, and they uh, welcome in a certain way um, some uh, uh, seasonal workers. So they have uh, some buildings, like you can see in this slide, that are of bad quality, that are occupied only some months by the uh, seasonal workers. And uh, it's a cut from the fields. It's far from the fields where they work and so on. So the, the, the site was given to the competitor to find new way to regenerate, to, to create a better life for these seasonal uh, workers. And the winning project is quite interesting. Next slide. Because at the same time, it's not visible on this slide. They work at the large scale to connect by green paths the area of the housing to the to the field where they work to uh, create a good uh, connection and then um, they, uh, they they start from the experience of each seasonal worker with their life from when they arrive to their settlement and this observation they propose a creation of a landscape of uh, adapted green pathway and the second element is to try to uh, ameliorate the quality of, uh, because it's only to sleep today, the place uh, they have, and they want to transform them in uh, uh, keeping the former building and to add some uh, new, uh, uh, to recycle the degraded building uh, in uh, temporary housing, but uh, adding also public service and to renovate this uh, existing building, they create a sort of modular system with a reversible use uh, that is added to the facade to make a sort of intermediate space. Uh, it connects also to the topic uh, about the proximity, courtyards, balconies, activities area. But you can see also that the, you have the two movements at the same time. One is a uh, large scale to, to take into account the way of life of their seasonal worker. And the second is the, their way of life when they are in their uh, housing. And the last project, which is a little more classical, but interesting, it's uh, Venice Lagoon in uh, the city of San Dona in Italy. And the city is facing climate change, but very hardly and of course, natural degradation because they, they are on the Laguna of Venice. Uh, and the proposed site is not so large. It's just a bus station, but it's a brutalist concrete infrastructure uh, to reinvest with a new use. So very often it's a compromise because it's uh, not very um, good to destruct. And so they, they keep the concrete infrastructure, just the structure. And but simply rather than simply design space for commercial or communal activity, the project propose uh, as use and sort of agroecologic condenser, uh, a sort of urban ecology restored uh, for the whole city center in order to make um, life exist uh, in all its form. It's and they use the vertical uh, structure of the former uh, station uh, to create large slabs uh, to host diversity of plantation. So it's quite interesting with a very common and, and not good quality uh, building to try to transform it in a sort of a, a productive uh, agricole uh, land uh, inside the city. So it's another example of yes. the change of uh, life of use. Yes, and we can see, we can see now we are at the end of the, our uh, presentation, we can see that uh, we have different ideas about uh, the change of paradigm, about this question of bifurcation. Uh, and, but uh, of course we have different ideas and with some dominant uh, uh, thematic uh, in each one, but of course, each of them use 
connect all this idea together, more or less, but they connect them. And what we could see is um, uh, how it's possible by architecture, by landscape and architecture, and uh, architecture works with ecosystem, with users, and with uh, equity, they, they, it's possible in a way to regenerate uh, imagination, but not only imagination, the way of doing. And yeah. uh, to with, because what we wanted to, to, to do and in, in, in our research, it was we wanted to try to, to, to analyze the idea and at the same time the concrete proposals. And so. Yeah, just a last word um, to say that uh, we were quite uh, satisfied with the result of this. Uh, session Europe on 16. Now it's a, the time and very often it's long, the, the intermediary time between the competition and the process of implementation because it's a negotiation on each side with a partner. The, the competition is just to open the ID and after it's a negotiation to uh, starting from this ID to create a real transformation of the sites. And it's now the period. So some sites like uh, Spanish one are quite advanced already in, in the process. Others are, are slower, like uh, Italy and so on. But it's classical. But uh, what is important is uh, from our analyze, we have also a scientific committee in Europe uh, of the result of Europe 16. We decided to continue in the second session of Europe 17, the same topic of living city, and we launched it on next last Monday. So I make a, a small advertising because it's open to also uh, in Turkey. It's, uh, but we make this time uh, more emphasis on the creation of uh, alternative uh, and to increase this idea of uh, uh, taking care or be more attentive and welcome uh, difference, vulnerability and so on. So it's uh, it's launched now uh, for the competitor, and it will be uh, closed uh, in the uh, end of, uh, of July. Uh, and after we have a long period where we have a lot of jury because we have 12 countries and 51 sites, the same type of site as you saw during our presentation in between. We call that milieu, you no, know, because it's better. It could be in rural, it could be in urban. But the same goal is to uh, arrive uh, to create a synergy between nature and artifact. And what, is, what we can notice today is that a lot of uh, competitors want to work about rural districts and not only urban districts, not only metropolis, but rural situations. Thank you very much. Thank you.